let's start talking about the Batman. I know we're both anxious to like touch on that topic. Um, you saw it on Saturday, right? Yeah. And uh, I saw it Thursday opening night, and I saw it again yesterday last night. Okay. Um, you see my videos on how I feel, my initial reaction. Yeah. Um, I gotta say that after watching it for a second time, um, there are some things that I have changed my mind on. Um, okay. But there are some things that I haven't changed my mind on, right? Okay. So, what did you think of the movie? I I thought it was really good. Okay, so I obviously I've been anticipating this. This project as such has been going on for so many years. You know, we've we've had the the project where obviously Affleck was going to direct and star in it. And then he pulled out of it and obviously Matt Reeves took over. They then started filming it in 2019. Obviously, we then got hit by the pandemic, which then meant that obviously over here in the UK where they filmed a lot of it, they had to stop filming in the studios. And so there was, I think there was like a gap of like six months from the initial shots. So through January and February of 2020, they, they obviously were filming. Then they had to stop. They got to, I think it was September, October 2020, and they started filming again. Um, and then in between that, to stop and start and stop and start all the way through. So that's one of the reasons why it's taken so long. And so, obviously, as a Batman fan, you're eagerly anticipating seeing this new film. Uh, there's been no standalone Batman film in the last 10 years, obviously, other than Affleck um, in Justice League and Batman vs. Superman. Um, so of course I was really, really anticipating and, um, went in there when I heard, when I heard that it was three hours long, I was really, really interested because I was expecting there to be, you know, a lot of beating up, a lot of asses being busted. Um, and I also heard that there was an hour, an hour of footage that they had to cut out of it because it was made four hours long, which I found interesting. Um, so obviously they've had to edit it down to what they thought was the complete package. Um, and I've gone in there, um, and I, I thought they, they did a really, really good job in terms of the Gotham that it was set in. Um, basically from when, obviously it's year two, um, you know, he's, he's still in his infancy in terms of his career as the Batman. Um, He's still learning his detective skills. Um, and don't get me wrong, I I thought it was a really good film, um, but I did have some issues with it. Okay. But then again, but then again, I've had issues with every Bat film that I've seen. Right. I had some issues with The Dark Knight and Nolan's films. Right. Um, even though I think that all three of them are great in their entirety, um, so of course you want to see you want to see a different take on the Batman. Um, we're used to seeing the, the Batman um, so many years into his career. Uh, obviously, with the the Burton ones, um, you start off with Keaton. You know, he's just he's just starting. Um, we then see obviously Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. And then obviously Nolan's new take, where you see him in the beginning, you know, tra training up to be this this superhero. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I, I, I was happy, um, but there were some issues. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. And yeah. I left the cinema. I left the cinema um, a bit deflated. Yeah, I agree. That's exactly how I felt. Um, you know, mixed feelings, and um, uh, I like I like I've mentioned in my initial reaction, and I'm gonna mention again. Um, when I think of the movie, at you know by itself as 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 as, as a movie as a film, it's a beautiful yeah. film. It's beautifully. It has great scenes, great close-ups, great edits. You know, the graphics are amazing. Um, the yeah. acting on everyone's part was amazing. 
for what the material was. For what the material and the story was, it basically was close to perfect for for what Matt Reeves was trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because he was trying to deliver on a psychological detective noir, right? Yeah. Um, However, one point that you made that is very valid that goes with the reasoning what with why I have certain issues with the movie is the anticipation, right? Because yeah. <clears throat> in the comics, obviously we've seen different versions of Batman, right? Yeah. But the things that have always remained consistent with Batman is that Batman is intelligent, as intelligent as, you know, the portrayal of Sherlock Holmes in the, in, you know, the Robert Downey Jr. movies, right? Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Batman is an expert martial artist, right? Yeah. And in some ways, he is kind of a sociopath, right? But he, yeah. he keeps himself, his, his whole story is him dealing with his trauma and him dealing with not crossing the line and becoming his enemy, right? Yeah. And in the t- and, and and the thing is, is like every director that has taken the Batman franchise has had this habit of giving us their version of Batman, just not like the version. Yeah. just like just like we've done with the artists in the DC comics, right? DC has mm-hmm. always had the same habit. They give every artist yeah. creative freedom with the character, right? But yeah. artists understand that when it comes to the fans, there are certain things that you cannot do. And that is take away certain characteristics about the character that take away from the story, <clears throat> right? And in the, But in the movies, it's different. All these directors have a habit of taking away things from yeah. the character where we always feel this dissatisfaction with with all these movies because even though they're great we have no choice but to be kind of optimistic and positive about their take on it but the truth is is that they have yet to give us the batman from the comics right and in my opinion Zack snyder was the closest one to it was the closest one to it right and, and that's what I was expecting Matt Reeves to do. I was expecting Matt Reeves to give us a Batman that was even closer than Zack Snyder's Batman. And I feel yeah. like the Batman that I saw was nowhere near the Batman that I was expecting. Yeah. You know? What were... What were uh, what was one of your issues with the film? Well, I had an issue with the ending. Why? And I'll be on it. And I'll be. And I'll be on it. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I had an issue with the ending of the Dark Knight. Okay. I, I thought the Dark Knight was an absolutely fantastic film, untouchable, untouchable, right? Right. But when I saw that ending at the end of the Dark Knight where you've got the guy, uh, they, they both got the, the switches and they have to, you know, they're, they're looking at one another about who's going to press the button. And you got the joke and you got the joker and he's, and he's sat there and he's like, he's like, don't press the button, press the button. You know, he's expecting one of them to blow the hell out the boat. Right. Yeah? Right. And I, I, mm. and I just felt deflated with that. I, I was expecting something with more, more stature, something with more, um, more jo- Joker-esque, you know, scaring the public. Okay, fair enough. Say, a boat full of uh, citizens and a boat full of uh, prisoners, yeah? Um, obviously, you would expect the the citizens to push the button because you've got a boat full of prisoners, yeah? Right. I was just left a little bit deflated. I, 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 I agree with you with The Dark Knight. Um, when that first when that movie first came out, I had a problem with that ending as well, because mm-hmm. I didn't expect them to give us such a methodical Joker. You know, the Joker yeah. is a very chaotic character, so much so mm-hmm. that he's never he's his plan never works because 
he's so deranged and delusional about what he can accomplish. But yeah. Christopher Nolan decided decided to give us a more realistic Joker that was actually an evil genius, right? Yeah. Methodical. Everything was thought out, planned. You know, he was mm-hmm. insane, but he was. You know, psych. He was like a a, a, a serial killer, like a a, so, a psych, not a sociopath, but a so a, a, a psychopath. A psychopath. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Um, it was interesting him choosing, you know, uh, for that to be the Joker's, you know, plan, right? To play on the chaos of and morality of the people of Gotham, right? Yeah, and then, then the, at the end of the film, Batman having to choose to take on the blame for Harvey Dent, uh, yeah, you know, killing people, right? So it yeah. was, and, and 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 that's the thing too, because it's like that was a very psychological ending, like that. The Dark Knight, in my opinion, was one of the most psychological. Of movie thrillers of Batman, you know, and yeah. now that's why I kind of said in my video that this movie felt like it was competing with that movie because the ending in the Batman is kind of the same. It's the Riddler, so of course, yeah, out outwitting Batman and flooding Gotham. Yeah, right. But but I but you know that kind that ending of flooding Gotham doesn't it remind you also of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises when Bane blew up the stadium and was trying to you know yeah. enclose Gotham to make to raise crime you know I felt like that's that's a that's a that's a source material that's too early to bring on. To an infant Batman, what do you think? Yeah. Right. I think. Um, no, you're right. You're right. Um, and I mean, you look at all three movies. All three of them have this this ending, don't they? You know, you look at Batman Begins, and you've got the League of Shadows attacking. Um, right. Every Gotham. ending, every yeah. every plot is the same almost. Yeah, yeah. and it's like and it's like all, they they've used a set plot line with the film. So it starts off a certain way. There's a middle, then the ending has to end off this way, and they've developed it. What they've done is they've stripped the the skeleton out of Batman Begins and put it in the Dark Knight. Yeah, they've ended Batman Begins with the card, the calling card. Right. Oh, the Joker's coming next. Right. Yeah. And they've left that cliffhanger. Well, look at the cliffhanger in this film. You've got the Riddler banged up in uh, Arkham Asylum. Mm -hmm. And he's coming to terms with the fact that he's now not the celebrity. His master plan has has failed. He's now just this this criminal sat in this cell. And he's looking from from either side. How long he's going to be in there, he doesn't know. Yeah? Right. And then all of a sudden, you, you hear this laughing next door. Is is it is it the Joker? I don't know. I don't know. It's someone laughing. It is the Joker. But then Matt Reeves confirmed it is. Is, it, is the Joker. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so obviously any subsequent film that comes along, yeah. the second film is going to have the Joker in it. Right. See, but, don't you find that? Don't, what were we going to ask? Don't you find that? A, don't you find that a comparison with the Dark Knight? Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's that. completely a comparison because every aspect of the Batman is too similar to the Dark Knight, right? Because, all right, let's take away the obvious. Obviously, Batman movies have to be dark, gritty, right? That's who Batman is, right? Psychological, even, right? However, they they're sticking to too much realism, right? Yeah. And, 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 and I have a problem with that because Batman, even though he is human in the comics, he is the peak of humanity, right? He's the human being 
who is a ninja, a master ninja. He's a human being who's a master genius detective, right? He's he can bench press a thousand pounds. He can, you know, he can beat up mutant mutated monsters, right? And in this movie, all you see throughout the whole thing is Batman being vulnerable. And even though I understand it, he's two years in as Batman, this Batman yeah. did not feel like a Batman who took, who had 10 years of training, right? Not. Because not. if you look at Batman Begins, right? Christian Bale not only goes through his own training, you know, being a criminal, but he goes through a couple years of training with Ra's al Ghul, right? And when he started off as Batman, he makes mistakes, right? But his martial arts isn't hindered, right? He basically takes on the whole thing on his own. But in this yeah. movie, Batman needs help. He needs constant help from Alfred or Selina or yeah. even uh, James Gordon, right? So it's like you're not really showing Batman's strengths. Instead, you're showing nothing but his weaknesses throughout the whole movie. Do you, do you think, though, that this could have been done deliberately in terms, in terms of the setup for the next film? So in the next film, and I know this is, this is in its infancy, because the first film's just come out, yeah? We're, we're two days in, three days into this film coming out. But thinking ahead, do you think that, that with this being Matt Reeves' depiction of the Batman, it's, it's, and obviously he, it's possible. he's used obviously aspects of the comic book, yeah? There's obviously aspects of the other films in there. Right. Do you think this, do you, do you think that this is his depiction of Batman making mistakes and, and him using the people around him to make him who, he's, who he is? But then in the next film, with the Joker, right? There's an even bigger plot. There's an even bigger story. There's an even bigger super villain. Okay, quick thinking with all the, the different um, things See, that he does to the to the population of Gotham. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. I'm I'm afraid of of them taking the same approach that Christopher Nolan took, where every movie is a psychological plot. Right. You know, because even though Batman is a psychological character, the majority of times he's a action hero, right? Like Superman, right? A lot of the yeah. times the, the, the villains he fights is all about brawn, not about brain, right? Christopher Nolan decided that every plot in his movie was going to be a psychological battle. Right, yeah. because those movies portray what it's like for Batman to face his mantle, his his mask. Right, yeah. we don't need to see that again. What we need to see is a Batman who's heroic, not only intelligent but heroic, and can take on big bad monsters. Yeah, right. And I have no problem with Matt Reeves taking making a movie where Batman battles uh, someone who try, who's trying to outwit him, right? But what did they do? In the end of this movie, I didn't feel like Batman won, right? In fact, I felt like he lost more than he won in this movie because he was outwitted by the Riddler toward, at, the, at the end of the day. You were outwitted because the, out, the Riddler still flooded the whole city, Right, um, Alfred almost died. Yeah. Right. You needed to be saved by Selena Kyle and needed to use Venom to lash out on the guy, on the on the on the henchman that almost killed her. Yeah. Right. And then his approach to every situation in the movie is 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 not even smart. It's not even smart because. He's getting shot at constantly in the movie, right? He's using basic martial art moves like judo and boxing, right? 
He doesn't approach any situation with stealth or tact or, you know, strategy. Right? So it's like if you're if you're if if you're trying to form him through the people around him and then in the second movie, you're going to create a plot where you strip these people away from him. That's another psychological plot. That's not that's not a mythic Batman that can face Superman. Right? Yeah. Because one thing that Zack Snyder did really good with Batman versus Superman is that he gave Batman <laughs> enough scenes for you to see the years in Bruce Wayne's uh, composure and behavior of him being Batman. Yeah, yeah. Right? You see the cruelty in how he handles the criminals, and you even see the mythic you know, side of him where he's the Batman, like he looks like a creature, like climbing things, you know, he, he approaches when he goes to go save Superman's mom, right? You see there his, his prowess in his combat skills and gadget use, right? He, he approached the room like a ninja. Yeah. Right. That's Batman, right? That's why he was able to almost kill Superman. Right? Yeah. But this this version of Batman is too human. Too human, in my opinion. Way too human. Too close to Christopher Nolan's portrayal of Batman. Maybe maybe that is because they've they've tried to make him too realistic. Yeah. Yeah. You think you think about all the other films that we've seen. Yeah. I mean I one one of the other points that I wanted to make to you was, I mean, I was rather disappointed about the fight scenes. Me too. And what, and what, what I was disappointed about the fight scenes. So, so at the start, we we see him, and you see him literally rising up off the floor after kicking the absolute crap out of that guy, and uh, and they ask him, "Who are you? I'm vengeance." And then the camera shot from behind. You see all these guys just stood there staring at him and he rises up yeah and mm-hmm. to me that was you, you saw you saw the um the attack prowess you see that he wasn't scared of all them guys stood in front of him you could see in his mind what he was going to do to all of them they're all staring at him wanting to you know throw punches and kicks at him and go after him because they could just witness their mate get beaten up by him right they're thinking, they're thinking, well, look, there's there's nine, ten of us. There's one of him. Right. Yeah, we're going to get him. But you know what's going to happen. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And it happened. But literally, before I went and saw that film, and I actually watched it again today, if you go on YouTube and you type in Ben Affleck Batman, right, there's a video on there of the warehouse scene at the end when yes, he saves Superman. that's the one I was Mark, talking about. Right? Yep. And he absolutely, you, you can see the fear. You can see he's in that room and they, they've got all their weapons and the way he moves, ninja, yeah? yeah. He, he just moves around the room, knocking seven light, and he's already thinking of the next move because then he does it, yeah? And the bulkiness of his body is similar to obviously what we've seen in the comics. Yeah.